Hello, Bloody Meow, and welcome to yet another Let's Play. This time we have Severance Blade of Darkness. And I have to say, this was a complete surprise. I impulsively purchased this game and tried it out and loved it. This game was created by or developed by Rebel Act Studios, which is now uh, defunct in 2001. So all the way back when, very very long time ago, can't remember what I was doing. I believe I might have been. I probably was still in elementary, maybe. Can't remember. Hard to imagine this was out at that time. Just amazing, considering the, the quality and craftsmanship this game contains. Published by Codemasters, which we know for several games that are uh, popular. But basically, I think I was watching something, Demon Soul, something, and a related video on YouTube, maybe. I maybe I think that's where it was from. And I clicked on it, and I just watched, I don't know, it wasn't even a Let's Play, it was just some gameplay for like three minutes. And I just like, I really want to try this, it sounds fun. And I found out that it's available on goodoldgames.com, aka GOG.com. And six bucks, bam, bought it. Just didn't even think twice. Had no trouble starting it up on Windows 7 64 bit, which is something to say for, uh, you know, GOG. They really know what they're doing when they release a game, at least for the ones I purchased. And I love this game. To me, and this is not nostalgia talking, because this is the. I had no idea this game existed. I had no idea what it was about. So, no nostalgia talking. To me, this game surpasses easily today's games. Not all the games, but certain games, especially games in that genre, in my opinion. Um, it could be seen as a precursor to Dark Souls. I like to refer to it as the great grandfather or the grandfather of Dark Souls, but it's not related to Dark Souls at all. It, it has a stamina bar and it has a pretty rigid difficulty and it's pretty unforgiving. That's, that's about it. That's, and, and the combat is paced. It's not hack and slash. You gotta pace and think strategically how you're gonna dismember your opponents. And I really like it for that. So, this is not a blind let's play. I'm actually treating myself and playing this game on my own, and I have been. I haven't finished it yet. It's actually kind of a long game. At least, well, it might not be as long as I know what I'm doing. Uh, I'm playing as a knight character. You can play with four different characters. I'm play I was playing as a knight character, and for this let's play, I'm going to be playing as a barbarian character. Playing as a different character is a totally different experience. You go through the same levels, but you get a different intro level. So the intro level will be partially blind. I tested it just to make sure. So without further ado, let's enjoy this masterpiece, and I hope you all can uh, agree with me once it's over. Severance Blade of Darkness. The steps of Karakoma faded into the distance behind you, leaving only memories. These days of journey across the ancient tribal grounds have been like a dream. But now, before your very eyes, Kashgar, the mythical homeland of your ancestors. What mysteries, what fate awaits you in the shadows of its sacred monuments? And enter Blade of Darkness we go. So, um, if you may have not noticed, there's four characters to choose from. You can choose between a knight, a dwarf, an Amazon, and a barbarian. Obviously, I have picked a barbarian class. Um, it really changes gameplay around. Uh, I think I can give a nice quick prelude to the actual gameplay quickly before we encounter any sort of danger and kind of enjoy the nice peacefulness this game develops. Keep in mind, this game was released in 2001 and this is how, I guess, nice you can really get a feel for the atmosphere even back then. This graphics were groundbreaking back then. Just, it was applauded and critically acclaimed for uh, the shadows and dynamic lighting that it was able to um, achieve. That is our first target, it looks like. And the, the soundtrack, I'm just going to say this, I'll probably say it a lot of times, is just absolutely fantastic. Now, oh, our first battle. Well, let's just go see why this game is called Severance.
That's why. And you can pick up the limbs of enemies and beat the living crap out of other people with it. It's ridiculous. <laughs> so, and you can um, toss items. Any, any freehand item you can toss. And, um... You know, just fantastic. Now... Just to get all this out of the way, the knight basically has as your overall, um, overall well-rounded character. Uses a shield, can, can move while holding the shield and as a guard, and um, is able is excels at one-handed weapons. Now the uh, dwarf is more defensive, has a little bit more hit points than the other characters, but has a shorter reach and is not as good as dodging. The Amazon has the least amount of hit points, um, has tr has the longest recovery time when trying to climb up ledges, um, but it excels at spears, and she uh, is very fast and her dodge is actually a full-blown roll. The Barbarian is a little bit of the Knight, a little bit of the Amazon. He can dodge pretty decently and he's, and he's pretty quick. He doesn't have as much hit points as the Knight, but he can use two-handed swords and maces and axes to... Uh, to a T. And as you see, I'm one-shotting and decapitating these poor little goblin um, adversaries <laughs> with no trouble at all. And like I said, I could hurry through this game. I easily could, but like I said, when I'm passionate about a game, I want you to experience what I first experienced. And um, like I said, this is partially blind too. But I do know kind of where I'm going right now. And um, like I said, this is a, has a, it's a bit of an RPG action platformer come strategic hack and slash is what I would call it. And, uh, as soon as I have trouble getting up the ledges here. So I never really played the Barbarian as I said. I have played the Knight almost, I don't know, I've played probably 10 or so hours as the Knight. And um, I started to play the Amazon just to try it out. And I'm speeding through it with the Amazon and the Dwarf I didn't have very much um, fun doing that. So you can see, I kind of did a pretty tricky jump there. And this game, as you might think, this is a secret area, and it rewards that. But not in the traditional sense, where you get some super high-powered item. Well, first of all, you get more enemies. But remember, more enemies equals um, more experience. The blue bar that you see rise up beside the level one is your experience bar. The Obviously the red bar is the hit points and it goes down quite frequently and it will not stay full a lot. Very suddenly will it stay um, full or even slightly above halfway in my opinion. At least what I think. So obviously spires are no match for the um, fury, primal rage of a barbarian. But as you can say, these are actually, at level 1, these are actually worth pretty good experience. And if you don't do that tricky jump, you're not going to get here very easily. So we're definitely going to get a level up. And then when we level up, I'll explain the uh, little bit of a, the RPG style of this game. And look at that. We got our, our bow and, and quiver. Basically, it's the only type of bow I think you can get. And you always keep it from now on. And it will allow us to find secrets later in the game, which I'll have to explain to you, because this game needs a little explaining, because otherwise you're just kind of watching a strangely slightly um, before the times hack and slash. But before the times, like I said, is not really uh, the right word for it, because I, like I said, this game is just absolutely fantastic, and I hope you feel the same way, but if you don't, well, it's too bad, I'm playing it anyway. So we leveled up, hit points went up a good bit, and you hit F1 to check your uh, RPG screen. So basically, this screen right here shows you what special combos and attacks you can do um, and at what level you're allowed to do them when you have certain weapons equipped. So these are basically weapons that the Barbarian's going to find. So as you see, we had the Chaos Sword, but we don't get the speed to kill power combo until level 5, so we've got to wait a bit. Uh, text or anything like the in the intros that we saw. Items, this is all the items in the game and what they do. So if you get something, what's a ghost medallion do? Oh, it's poison resistance, it cures poisons. So you can find all these other items and use that. Finally, these are like, um, I guess, weaker combos, but just kind of basic combos you can do with any um, two-handed sword or axe that you, that you have. And some of them are just only two-handed swords. So at level two, we can do something called rage. So that's Attack right plus attack right. So let's try out rage and see it unlock. That's rage. 
Basically, if you hit someone with that, time that right, and you and someone gets hit with a direct hit of that rage combo, it's gonna put a hurting on them. And the power combos that I saw that are with specific weapons that I've shown you, those are the strongest attacks in the game. And they um, they show that by giving you a red weapon trail as opposed to the yellow one you saw. Yellow are the soft combos and red are the large combos or the uh, more menacing combos. So once I hit, maybe, perhaps if I hit level 5 I can show you uh, one of those power combos and you can just see how much devastation is behind those blows. Now the drawback to those strong, strong attacks is that you are um, they're usually pretty hard to hit. Um, basically, you got to kind of time your distance, and if you get hit by anything, no matter how weak, even a spider bite, it interrupts your attack completely. That's with any attack you do. There's no, there's no poise in this game, and uh, that's kind of the last comparison I want to give to Dark Souls. There, but you, you'll see what I mean when I call it the grandfather, just by the couple of um, attacks you've seen so far. So obviously, that was a bit of a nice detour, scenic detour. I got a full health potion, which is actually a pretty rare item and it's very very nice uh, as you can probably guess it refills your hit points to full so let's try this rage combo in this poor poor goblin let's see if we can do it right boom boom oh nice hey there head how you doing this game is absolutely brutal, and uh, one of the options in the uh, gore settings is mutilations on or off. And, uh, so anything like that, you know, it's going to be good. See the dynamic shadows? Look at that. 2001! Do you understand? Do you not grasp? If you do not grasp, I feel completely sorry for you. Another rage for you! You run slower with your weapon out, you run faster with it, uh... Sheave, so that's the benefit and advantage and the reasoning to do that, to do such. But, like I said, I'm trying to get all of the information protruding out of my face to you uh, as early as possible when we're doing just the intro stuff so we can just kind of have fun and play the game at our leisure. So, already we have kind of branching paths, kind of scramble style exploration. I see I can kind of mount to go up this way or I can just kind of go this looks like kind of like the straight linear path so already that uh, let's see that supersedes and um, beats about I don't know 65% of the games that come out today because they're all just fucking linear and give you a waypoint to go towards but enough of that this is time for Blade of Darkness's light to shine if that makes sense oh hey there buddy you can also sneak by holding in the shift key. And um, it's not too useful, but it can be, you can get the jump on the enemy, but you, there's no special backstab, but you get close enough. <laughs> Getting close enough as a barbarian is uh, enough as a stealth attack. So let us begin the death. Oh, spoke too soon. I saw my stamina, if your stamina goes low in this game, you get severely hampered. You do a extremely long attack and you gotta recover. You cannot move or do anything until your recover is uh, your recovery animation is gone. So the more you deplete stamina, like if you did a really strong attack that would have made your stamina go into negatives, you gotta breathe and recover to get back to low energy. And then your stamina starts recovering. Pretty rough. Um, life potions? Anything that's below 500, you cannot pick up and keep in your inventory for later. So you have to... Um, only use those instantly. So you can't use them if your health is not, um, if your health is full, you can't use them. It just said you don't need this yet. So I like this place right here, this little lake I found out is just completely pointless, except for just more atmosphere and more um, environment pleasing and eye candy to uh, the player. And you know, that's something that you just gotta really, I guess you gotta appreciate. And if you can't appreciate that, well that's fine too, because the gameplay enough is, is alone to make this, uh, completely amazing, but can't even remember what direction I came from anymore. I think this is the right direction, yeah. So we see there's some people, the off the beaten path, there's a couple enemies, and we do want to fight enemies, but um, uh, it looks like we're just going to take this guy out, because it looks like this actually is the way to go, because this, maybe I can open this gate from the other side. So they're trying to teach you that you had to go this way first, which is kind of cool. This game is not a, um, 
<laughs> hand holder, that's for sure. Chaos Sword, already my uh, main equip. You can equip a total of four weapons, including the bow, so I can equip three more weapons. Or I can equip two more weapons, I'm sorry. So my Chaos Sword, the bow, and then two others for one and two. Come on! Let's go. And you see that number, red number by the goblin's face is how much hit points he has. And I like the portrait style. The closer he is, the more, um, the less opaque the, uh, his portrait is. So you see the portrait slightly get into view. I think it's a kind of nice little, uh, touch. Like I said, I like little touches in games. Whoa! I got a new attack. I never did. So yeah, every time you, d you do a new combo for the first time, even if it's just your basic attack, it says, discover new attack. So that's the high attack. It actually is a pretty long... It actually takes a long time to do that one, actually, which is a lot different. All right, you got my rage! There we go. And it looks like this does not open from that side. I'm not going to waste time to go back down and fight that one goblin. He can uh, be the messenger to tell everybody that uh, the barbarians are coming. The barbarians are coming. So anytime that you see a little hiccup in the music and in the uh, frames, it is me saving. Unfortunately, the game um, it has not beaten time completely, and for some reason the game can um, permanently crash and corrupt your save file if you save too quick, to uh, put it lightly. So basically when I go to save, I have to say, when it says, are you sure you want to save, I wait there for about 10 seconds and then hit save. So I figured I'll do everybody the uh, pleasure of just skip it, uh, cutting that out every single time. So here we go, we got a new enemy type. This is the um, orc, as opposed to the goblins. Although, I might got this name slightly wrong. I don't think they ever are tell you the names in this game, so that's what I'm calling them. That's a goblin, and the bigger, fatter guy that you're about to see is called the orc. And trust me, if I make this game look... Well, I, don't, I still think I'm going to get hurt big time. But if I make this game look any slightly um, doable, the first time I played this game, I saved in mid-combat many times. Like, you can save in mid-combat, and it's absolutely ridiculous. Um, but I really felt like I uh, needed to. But luckily, the first time I saved was actually just when I just described it. So you can get torches and light them and um, be able to see further and... Oh, hey, buddy. Would you like a torch to play with? Oh, see that burn? Bring it on! Yeah! <laughs> 